Hello, Integrated Math One. Welcome back to Boot Camp. Today, we're discussing the F word of the math world, also known as fractions. I know you love them. I know you love them. But that's why we got to go over them, right? We got to make sure that we're cool, that we're solid, that fractions aren't going to be messing us up. So please remember the basics. When adding or subtracting fractions, you must have common denominators. Please, 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 you know how this works. So if I had three sevenths and I added another two sevenths, that means I have five sevenths, right? If I cut a pie up into seven slices and I had three and then I gave myself two more, I've eaten five slices of pizza, or pardon me, five slices of pie. I still haven't eaten the whole pie. There's still a couple pieces left that I haven't gotten to yet but I have now eaten five sevenths of that pie. So this is why we need to have common denominators so we can properly add it together and figure out how many pieces of pie we ate or pizza, whatever works for you. So when you come across a problem like this, we have a little issue, right? Three sevenths minus two fifths. They're not common denominators. I can't add or subtract them until my denominators match. So fine, I'm gonna make a match. Um, these guys don't have a lot in common, five and seven, so I need to make the denominator 35 because 35 is a number that both five and seven will go into. 35 is our least common denominator for these guys. But that means I have to multiply that seven by five, which means the top has to get multiplied by five. That also means then that that five has to get multiplied by seven to get to 35 which means the top also has to get multiplied by seven. So in order to make that denominator 35, we're gonna to have to multiply that by five. In order to make that five denominator 35, we have to multiply by seven. But if you do it to the bottom, you have to do it to the top as well. So this whole thing has to get multiplied by five over five. Three times five is 15, seven times five is 35. And this whole thing has to get multiplied by seven. So two times seven is 14, five times seven is 35. There we go. And now we can properly subtract. I have 15 35ths, I'm subtracting out 14 35ths. Oh, I only have one 35th left. Okay, fair enough. You guys know how to do this. I know it takes time to do the common denominators. I know, I get it, I get it. But you have to do it to get the answer right. I know some of you guys want to just be like, I know it's wrong. I'm just going to do it anyway. Don't do that. Give me those common denominators to get the right answer. So I've got two problems for you to work out. Go ahead and hit pause to work these out, getting that common denominator thing going on, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right. So let's take a look at our two thirds plus one fourth um, let's see, four and a three, I guess we're going to have to do a 12. That'll work just fine. So I'm going to take that two thirds in order for three to become 12. I have to multiply it by four. And for that one fourth, in order for that four to become a 12, I need to multiply it by three. So fine. Two times four is eight. Three times four is 12. One times three is three. Four times three is 12. And now I can add these guys together. Eight twelfths plus three twelfths gives me 11 twelfths. Yay. Now this one could be approached in a couple of different ways. Uh, again, the denominator's not the same. I have a six, I have a three, but I thought to myself, I can turn a three into a six. So I decided I didn't need to change the five six. I needed to change that one third. Because if I double that three, that'll become a six. So I'm gonna multiply that second fraction by two. So this guy is fine. Sorry, there's a little extra timesy guy in there. We don't need him, ignore him. Um, so I'm gonna multiply the second fraction by two over two. So the five, six is fine. One times two is two, three times two is six. And now this is super easy to do. Um, five, six minus two, six is three, six. Now, you may notice something at this point. You always need to simplify whenever possible. I looked at this and I was like, you know, I could simplify that. Some of you may know off the top of your head their answer is one half. If you don't, here's a trick. 
I'm going to rewrite that 3 and that 6. I can rewrite the 3 as 1 times 3, and I can rewrite that 6 as 2 times 3. You would agree with that? 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3. And because I have the 3 on top and on bottom, check this out, check this out, they're going to cancel out. Oh, goodbye, guys. And now I just have 1 half. You may have learned a different way of simplifying your fractions. That's okay. Do what works for you. Either way, 3 6 simplifies down to 1 half. Now, of course, not only do we add and subtract our lovely fractions, we also multiply them. We like multiplying fractions. When you multiply fractions, it just multiplies straight across. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So if I have 2 thirds times 4 sevenths, real easy. Just going to do 2 times 4 on top and 3 times 7 on the bottom. So I end up with 8 21sts. Yay. Um, but of course, we divide fractions as well. You know this. You know this. Now, do you remember what the trick for dividing fractions? When we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. We don't like dividing, so we just multiply by the reciprocal instead. So if I have something like 2 thirds divided by 4 sevenths, please remember the multiply by the reciprocal trick. The first number stays the same. That 2 thirds is just going to stay the exact same. That 2 thirds is not going anywhere. It's not doing anything weird. It's the second guy, the guy behind the division sign. That's the one we need to flip and change to multiplication. So that 2 thirds is going to stay the same. But instead of dividing by 4 sevenths, I'm going to multiply by 7 fourths. Much easier that way. And yeah, this is super easy now. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 4 is 12. But I can simplify. Both of those are divisible by 2. So I thought to myself, I could rewrite this. 7 times 2 over 6 times 2. And of course, the twos will cancel out, and I just have seven six. Yay! So dividing is not bad. Multiplying and dividing fractions is actually really, really, really easy. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to do some. Go ahead and hit pause to work these out, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. Let's do the first one. 5 6 times 3 fourths, fine. 5 times 3, 6 times 4, that's 15 over 24. But I realized that I could divide out a 3 out of both of those. So I rewrote 15 as 5 times 3, and I rewrote 24 as 8 times 3, just so those two, two would cancel out, and my answer is 5 eighths. For the second one, I don't like to divide. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So 10 11 stayed the same. And instead of dividing by 20 over 13, I'm going to multiply by 13 over 20. And then, of course, 10 times 13 is 130, and 11 times 20 is 220. But again, I looked at this, and I thought, you know, those are both divisible by 10. So I rewrote it. Uh, the numerator is 13 times 10, and I rewrote the denominator is 22 times 10. So the 10s will cancel out, and I just have 13 over 22. Bam. Magic. We are magical and amazing. We're awesome. You guys have got this. And now we managed to review, get your head back in the game so that you're ready for what's coming your way. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Let me know if you need something. Come see me during office hours. Email me. I'm around and I'll see you soon. Bye.